But we begin tonight in Enid, Oklahoma, a town that voted this week to remove city council member Judd Blevins after local activists discovered that not only did he once lead an Oklahoma chapter of the white nationalist group Identity Europa, which they pretentiously spell with a V where the U should be, but he also was one of the torch-wielding neo-Nazis chanting, Jews will not replace us in Charlottesville, Virginia, in August 2017, something NBC News reporter Brandy Zadrosny confronted him about last month. You were a leader in an Oklahoma chapter of a white nationalist organization, and I want to know if you have any explanation to that. Why did you march and unite the right? Why did you hold a tiki torch? Blevins has somehow denied that he has ever been a white supremacist. But at a candidate forum last week, he said his activism was motivated by the same issues that got Donald Trump elected in 2016. And he also defended marching in Charlottesville, saying he only did it to preserve the precious statues of the Southern troops who went to war against the U.S. military, which he's also a veteran of. Now, you may remember that the march was led in part by a man named Richard Spencer, who does admit proudly to being a white supremacist and who has in the past called for peaceful ethnic cleansing of America and advocated for a white ethnostate and who, upon Trump's 2016 win, urged his supporters to, quote, to, uh, to, to chant, hail Trump with their arms raised and party like it's 1933, you know, the year that Hitler came to power in Germany. Spencer was a headline speaker at that 2017 Unite the Right rally, spouting this ideology to an audience of several white supremacist groups, including Identity Europa with a V. But Spencer was also, believe it or not, classmates at Duke University with none other than Stephen Miller, a senior Trump advisor who wrote some of Trump's most inflammatory speeches and who has also and who also helped create the family separation policy that led to several migrant babies being ripped from their mother's arms. The two were reportedly members of Duke's conservative union. And when Miller was given the White House role in 2016, Spencer praised him, saying Miller could do, quote, good things for white America. Nowadays, Miller runs an organization called America First Legal, which has filed multiple lawsuits aimed at eviscerating DEI programs and fighting anti-white racism, which Judd Blevins has said is also his purpose as an activist. But back to Richard Spencer for a moment. What he is most known for, other than Charlottesville, is coining the term alt-right, basically as a more palatable, palatable way of saying white supremacist. Which brings me to another familiar face, Steve Bannon. Bannon, of course, was co-founder of Breitbart News, which he described as the platform for the alt-right, essentially a safe haven for Spencer and friends. And when Donald Trump ran for president in 2016, Bannon was appointed chief executive officer of his campaign, which ultimately led to a spot as chief strategist in the Trump administration, creating a direct line of white nationalism to the White House, the highest level of government. And, well, you know the rest. This is how white nationalism has become normalized in American politics. Someone like Judd Blevins wouldn't even have been able to get elected in the first place if it weren't for the likes of Donald Trump and his ability to make white supremacy mainstream. I mean, it, it may be the one thing, besides getting the party of Reagan to love Russia, that he was actually able to do that no one else has. Because this ideology has always existed, and people have tried in the past to implement it in our government many times. But they've all failed, because they never have been able to attach this rot to a major political party until now, with Trump's help. And with his help, White nationalism has grafted itself onto the Republican Party with almost zero resistance from Republicans. Republicans just let it happen. And because of that utter cowardice, they have allowed Richard Spencer's dream to become a reality. Joining me now is Brandi Zdrozny, NBC News senior reporter, and Stuart Stevens, senior advisor to the Lincoln Project and former Republican strategist. Brandi, great job in that reporting on Judd Blevins. Did you ever get an answer to why he marched in Charlottesville, other than he said he was protecting the statues, and why he led a chapter of Identity Europa? They spell it's Europa, but they spell it with a V because they're pretentious. Um, yeah, that's right. That's exactly why that uh, is the case. But um, it's very silly. Um, 
But yeah, so I, I've talked to Judd Blevin several times. Um, he has never given me a direct answer to that question. He did have to say something at a candidate's forum when he was directly asked for the first time really in public in a way that he couldn't really wriggle out of. And he said things like he did not like the anti-white um, messaging of the media. He said that he, for the same reason, he ex specifically invoked Donald Trump and said the same reason that Donald Trump was elected, anti-immigrant, um, said anti-immigrant stuff. You know, it, it's the, it is the same thing that we've been seeing, the same thing that he said propelled Donald Trump to the national stage in 2016, or the same thing that led him to pick up a tiki torch that day. And so, um, yeah, I think it's something that we've seen all too often. I think the thing with Judd Blevins here is that he really was a bridge too far holding that tiki torch. You know, people are sort of trying to rewrite January 6th, and some people have tried to rewrite um, the Charlottesville uh, Unite the Right rally. But when you see those images and you see those angry white men yelling, Jews will not replace us, that is a really hard history to rewrite, and it wasn't enough in Enid, Oklahoma. Yeah, Jews will not replace us. Kind of hard to rewrite. Kind of hard to say that that was a, a, a tourist visit. Uh, kind of hard to do that. Um, but, you know, it, it is true, Stuart, that, you know, things that would have been unthinkable in the Republican Party that you remember um, are now thinkable. Um, I, I, this would have been unthinkable. Let me show you Stephen Miller. Stephen Miller, and this is a couple of years ago he created this in 2022. An ad like this would have been laughed out of existence um, even 10 years ago, but now he puts it out there and it's totally normal. Here's uh, Stephen Miller's ad. When did racism against white people become okay? Joe Biden put white people last in line for COVID relief funds. Kamala Harris said disaster aid should go to non-white citizens first. Liberal politicians block access to medicine based on skin color. Progressive corporations, airlines, universities, all openly discriminate against white Americans. Racism is always wrong. The left's anti-white bigotry must stop. Okay, none of that is true. I just will put that out there. That was all a bunch of lies. But you worked in Republican politics for a long time, my friend. Can you ever imagine having seen something like that run by somebody who identifies with the Republican Party? You know, look, I, I'm really glad we're talking about this because I don't think we talk about Trumpism and race enough. Um, all of this nonsense that it's about some sort of economic stress. Um, it, it, look, Trump's coalition is 85 percent white in a country that is becoming a minority-majority country, and that is the underlying aspect of this. You know, race has always been, I think, the original sin of the modern Republican Party. We failed at that when I worked in the party. You go back to Eisenhower, he got 39 percent of the black vote. It fell to 7 percent with Goldwater. Trump got 8 percent. That's one point every 56 years. But at least when I worked in the party, we admitted it was a failure. I mean, Ken Melman, who was chairman of the party, went before the NAACP and apologized for the Southern strategy. And there were efforts to try to, to change this. But really, you know, the, the party failed. The party failed at a policy level to ever put forth a program that appealed to more non-white Americans, particularly African Americans. And now it's become just a full embrace of racism that the Republican Party is. And if you're for the Republican Party, this is what you are for. You, this isn't a cafeteria. You can't take from this and this and this. You got the whole buffet, and this is what it is. And you have to come to grips with that. Yeah, I mean, it's an American problem. I mean, look, the Democrats had their turn. Let's just be clear. The Democrats used to have the Klan folks in their side. But there was a white flight out of the Democratic Party into the Republican Party once black voters started voting in a party that was an anathema to them uh, at one time. They were all Republicans at one point. But you're absolutely right. There was this shift. And look, I'm old enough to remember Jack Kemp, friends of mine who got into, who were black folks that are black Republicans. They came in because of Jack Kemp and the elder George uh, Herbert Walker Bush. So it is, it's, it's a very different party now. And Brandy, you've reported a lot on on kind of what has happened. Um, what about this town? This is a white town. It's run by a conservative Republican mayor. The Judd Blevins thing was even too much for them. What were Republicans telling you about why they found this person to be unacceptable? 
So it's a very, very conservative Republican place. And, you know, I did talk to a lot of conservative Republicans, and a lot of them told me, you know, this is not who we are. This, you know, someone that I talked to yesterday, in fact, said, I was in Virginia. I just happened to be there after Charlottesville, like a week after Charlottesville. And she said, it was so raw there. People were so upset for, you know, for a good reason. And I just don't, I don't, we don't want to go back to that. You know, we want to move forward. There, you know, you say that this is the Republican Party, and I see what you mean. But for a lot of folks in Enid, Oklahoma, that is not what they want. That is not the, you know, lower taxes and conservatism that they really align themselves with. And they don't want to be a part of that. That, to me, is sort of, I, I was inspired and filled a little with hope. And I also, you know, also want to say that shame is a very powerful thing. And when you give people a choice and you say, you either need to pick what you are and what you aren't. And that's what this was with the recall election. I think a lot of people came out because they just did not want Enid to be associated do, do they, with that. Do they still support Donald Trump, though? Many of them do. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.